can you join me in giving a huge big West Lothian welcome to Gillian Dougherty? Thank you. Thank you, Jackie, and it's an absolute pleasure to be with you here this morning, and it's great to see so many of you here to listen, to learn, to question, drive your curiosity, and understand what the opportunity for you is for the future. So, as Jackie said, I would like to take you on a journey this morning, and I want you to imagine it's the year 2040. Have a think about the kind of roles or jobs that you're going to be doing then. What kind of technology do you use? What technology do you have in your pocket or indeed in your body? How do you learn? How are your children learning? And I want to take you to 2040 in the eyes of my daughter, Charlie. This is Charlie and she's nine. And she's just like any other little girl her age. She loves playing Minecraft and Roblox. She suddenly decided she's got some favorite YouTubers, which is a bit of a shock to her mother. She loves playing with her friends. She loves school. She still loves dressing up as a Disney princess as well, sometimes while playing Minecraft. And Charlie's just like any of her classmates. She's very different from me. She's a little different from you in the fact that since she was born, She's grew up with technology. The iPad was released the year that Charlie was born in 2010. And indeed, she could use it before she was one. And when she finally learned to walk at around 15 months, she walked to the TV and swiped it. And turned around to me as if to say, Mum, that's not working. She couldn't speak. And technology will impact every aspect of Charlie's life. So when she's 30, in the year 2040. What's a day in her life going to be like? What technology is she going to use? And it's highly likely that she will have implanted chipsets and biometric sensors in her body, gathering data about her blood pressure, her heart rate, her vitamin and mineral levels, her sleep patterns, her exercise patterns. And all of that data will be shared in Charlie's own personal data store, and she will decide who has access to that data. She'll be able to enter buildings with a swipe of a hand and maybe a retinal scan. She'll be able to enter concerts with a swipe. She might be able to travel the world and enter countries, taking biometric measures and actually data from her implanted chipsets. And one entity that Charlie will share that data with, let's call it Jarvis. Jarvis is Charlie's artificially intelligent personal assistant. And Jarvis will help Charlie manage her entire life. And Charlie shares her data from her chipsets and other aspects of her life with Jarvis. And as she wakes up in that morning in 2040, Jarvis around her bedroom has presented a number of holographic images with information and video and content that Charlie needs for the day ahead. Information Charlie's either asked for or Jarvis has decided is relevant for her. She's probably ignoring my call to see whether she's coming for dinner on the Sunday. And those images will move around the house as Charlie moves, will just appear. And she uses voice to talk to Jarvis not a traditional keyboard or other interface or touchscreen. She talks to Jarvis. And as she gets up, her holographic personal trainer arrives to take her through the exercises for the day. And that trainer will know what Charlie's eaten, what she's drunk, how much she's exercised, what things she's got planned, because Charlie's sharing some of that data from her implanted sensors in her body. Gone will be the day of saying, honest doctor, I only had two glasses of wine. And Charlie's holographic personal trainer are through, take her through getting her ready for the day. And after she's done that, she'll go to breakfast. And in the background, Jarvis has been working with her 3D printing chef to make her breakfast. And that breakfast will have every mineral and nutrient Charlie's body is saying it needs. It still may be Cocoa Pop flavored, but it will get her ready for the day ahead. 
And as she's leaving, she gives her house robot a number of tasks that she wants it to do that day. Water plants, gone will be the days of dead plants on windowsills. Tidy her room, make her bed, put on her washing, tidy up her flat. I think I'd quite like one of these right now for her. And just as she's leaving, Jarvis says, oh, Charlie, you've got that party tonight. Have you decided what to wear? And Charlie says, Jarvis, I've not, I've, I've just forgotten all about it. What are my options? Well, the thing is, in the year 2040, Charlie's body will be regularly 3D scanned. And every item of clothing and footwear she owns will be a perfect fit. No longer will she need to hunt the, ra the short rails in a shop. Every item will be a perfect fit. She won't need to put plasters on her heels because her shoes are rubbing. And many of those items will be 3D printed. So she says to Jarvis, well, will you pull up the options? And holographically, those options appear. And oh, by the way, Jarvis, can you get my friend Kate? Because she's coming to the party as well, and I want to have a chat to her about what we're going to wear. And together, using voice and gesture control, they flip through the options. And they pick on a fabulous outfit. And she asked Jarvis, could you get that 3D printed for me and ready at my hotel room for the party tonight? And Jarvis says, well, of course. And as she leaves her flat, she lives in a four-dimensional building. And you might ask, well, what is that fourth dimension? Well, that fourth dimension is shape and time. The shape of the building will change over time. Solar panels will appear. Rainwater gathering. Different aspects of the building will change depending on the weather pattern. The building will be completely self-sustainable in terms of energy, power, and water. And as she steps out her front door, her autonomous vehicle arrives to take her to work. And that autonomous vehicle can be both a road-going autonomous vehicle or air. And she'll travel that journey to work, potentially with friends or other people in her neighborhood, sometimes on her own. She'll catch up on her favorite TV programs or her favorite YouTubers, as it was, or whatever it will be called in 2040. She might finally return the call to me, letting me, me know whether she's coming for dinner on the Sunday. And as she gets to work, she says, actually, I'm going to walk those last few blocks. And as she passes people in the street through her augmented reality contact lenses, information about the people that she's passing will pop up in her field of vision. Information they're willing to share. Can you imagine how interesting this is going to be in the pubs and clubs of the future? And as they say in the west of Scotland, Charlie's stuck in at school. She likes school. And today at work, she's operating to perform a heart replacement surgery with robotic surgeons, with augmented reality and a senior surgeon from the other side of the world helping her complete the operation. But the heart isn't from a donor. The heart is 3D printed to an exact biological match of the patient. Gone are those years of lifetime of anti-rejection drugs, the lengthy waiting lists. And the operation is going to be a huge success and the patient will make a full recovery. And in the afternoon, she actually goes back to her old school and volunteers and talks about the role that technology is playing in her life with future generations. It is highly likely that we will have multiple careers in the future, and we will be continuing and always learning. And we will have a different balance in terms of work and life. And actually, she'll be volunteering that afternoon back at her school. And then she has to go to the party but the party's in London and Gla Charlie's in Glasgow. And it starts in an hour and a half. Well, how does she get there? Well, on the Hyperloop, of course. 750 miles an hour, shot down a partial vacuum tube. Glasgow to London in 35 minutes. And she gets to the party. She picks up her 3D printed dress that her and her friend Kate had picked. And she's a fantastic evening with her friend Kate. 
So my question to you is, have you used some of the technology that Charlie's going to use? Probably the more important question is, have you created some of it? Have you built it, designed it, collaborated around it? Because this tidal wave of technology is coming, whether we like it or not. But I would rather we're in a position here in Scotland to create some of it, not just to be users of it, to actually design and build it, to collaborate with teams across the world doing just that. And we will live, it's a guarantee, in a life where humans and machines collaborate. We will work together. I think we're a long way from the view of some that AI will take over the world and we will all be redundant as humans. I think we'll collaborate together. And how are we going to do that? Now, I've been very fortunate, as many years, unfortunately, as Jackie, 30 plus, of working in the technology sector. But it's been an amazing journey for me. And I'd just like to share some of the things that I've learned along the way. Disruption is really hard. Disruption is difficult. Innovation is difficult. And innovation is just like going across that cloudy bridge. You don't quite know if you're going to get to the other side. You don't know what's there. You don't know how you're going to get there. It's much, much easier to sit in that comfortable seat and do things the way you've always done them. But that is until someone comes and tips you out of it. And as you learn over the coming years, you learn about disruption. Who's a Nokia phone in here? Anyone? <laughs> Nokia were the world leaders, but they were disrupted. And it's happening all over. Airbnb, Google, Amazon, Prime Next Day Delivery, language that we never knew. Depending on the report you read, anywhere up to 60 or 70% of Charlie's classmates will have jobs that don't even exist just now. And that's quite hard to get your head around. Really, in that short space of time? Well, whose grandma was a search engine optimization specialist? You know? Whose grandpa was a mobile app developer? When you start to think about it like that, that is absolutely feasible that 60 or 70% of Charlie's classmates will have jobs that we don't even know the names of yet. And therefore, we need to innovate and we need to disrupt. And the question is, do we want to be the disrupted or the disruptors? And I would challenge we want to be the disruptors. So along that long journey, and I've worked with some of the most amazing clients around, around, around the world. Um, I spent 22 years at IBM before coming and working at the Data Lab, which is Scotland's innovation center for data science and artificial intelligence. Some of the things I've learned and some of the things that I think you need to bear in mind about the things you need to keep, the skills and capabilities. Creativity and curiosity, please don't ever lose it. Be the four-year-old you. Ask why, 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 why. Keep asking the why. Why does it need to be this way? Why do we need to still book doctor's appointments by phoning up? Why does it need to be like that? Every industry, you need to disrupt and innovate. So keep asking the whys. Keep that cre creativity and curiosity you had as a four-year-old. Learn how to negotiate. Negotiation is really a vital skill as you work in multi-dimensional teams around the world. Be comfortable working in teams. Teamwork is really important. The technologies that I talked about earlier are being developed by cross-disciplinary, multifunctional teams all around the world with different skill sets, designers, psychologists, social scientists, developers. Those types of teams are creating these types of technologies. So be comfortable with teamwork. Be adaptable and be comfortable with change. There's not many things I'll guarantee you today, but one thing I will guarantee you is change. What you start doing when you leave this fantastic college will not be what you end up doing in 20 or 30 years' time. So be comfortable with change. Be adaptable. Learn to enjoy it. And resilience. Pick yourself up. Sometimes something's not going to go quite the way you had hoped. 
So pick yourself up again and again and again. Be resilient. And leadership is so crucial and important. If someone offers you an opportunity and you're not sure that you can do it, say yes and then figure out how to do it later. It's always worked for me. Be bold, be brave, be bonkers. Yes, bonkers. Steve Jobs once says, it's the people crazy enough to think they can change the world who actually do. So the world out there is just waiting for you to come and change it. And so I'd like to end on this quote, all your dreams can come true. And it was great, I didn't know about uh, the chap, your alumni that's now with Adobe and San Jose. All your dreams can come true if you've the courage to pursue them. So be courageous, be bold, as I say, be bonkers, and go out there and change the world. Thank you very much.